Boys Lacrosse on CCX tonight. Champlin Park hosting Robbins Tail Armstrong. Good evening. I'm Steve Thompson along with Dan Ficken. It is another chilly night this spring, but we're going to play. No rain so far. And Dan, these are two evenly matched teams. The Rebels 1 and 5 coming off a big win over Totino Grace. Meanwhile, Robbins Tail Armstrong 2 and 3. Yeah, they, uh, this would be a good meeting for both of them. Uh, Armstrong started out with teams combined 14 and 1, one loss. <laughs> Champlin, they were first teams with 18 and 2, one loss combined. So they've run a gauntlet, both teams. So they're looking forward to play somebody a little bit more even with them right now. And um, I like Champlin Park right now. They just exploded for nine goals against Tutino Grace, a team that had two wins. Uh, they look like they're in the up and up. And they got two freshmen as their leading scorers. So it's looking good. And the Rebels have outstanding goaltending and Cody Iserman. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch him. He's going to play at the next level. Yeah, he's going up to Division II, Rollins College in uh, Florida. Has had a program for quite a while. Uh, that's a nice step up. And uh, I love seeing more, more and more Minnesota kids getting opportunities to play out east. And, uh, and he's, he's going to be a dandy to watch tonight. And on the other side, Armstrong has some elite scoring as well. Yeah, um, Mr. Camp, Matt Campion and Carter Lucas. 30 goals out of the 38 total they've scored this year have been scored by them. They are just tremendous. They've stepped up. The problem is they got to have the other kids on the team step up, and that's kind of what they've been looking for, a better flow for more offense. Play pretty good defense. Um, they've had a, a decent run. They beat Spring Lake Park, and uh, they also beat uh, Totino Grace. Well, and that's, and that they had 19 goals between those two games, or 29 goals in those two games. So they have some firepower. They've just been playing the tougher teams in the league as, as Champlain has. So it'll be interesting to see how they do against the Rebels. Should be a good one tonight. Champlain Park hosting Robbinsdale Armstrong. Boys Lacrosse coming up next. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You will also have access to our large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find us, go to the App Store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, now available on Apple TV, coming soon to Roku. It is a chilly but dry night here at Champlain Park. Boys lacrosse, Armstrong takes on the Rebels. Uh, the field not in the greatest shape in the world. We were down on the field for a while. It needs work, and uh, the real stuff has been slow to come back. But these are two teams that feel like they've got something to build on after tough starts. Both coaches felt that the last few games they've been playing pretty good and starting to put it, putting it together. Um, obviously, lack of practice and all this, it, so it takes a well, while. Unfortunately, they've gone through a meat grinder of a schedule to start out with. So today, their season kind of starts. Both these teams need this win tonight. So uh, we'll see what happens. And both teams right at the midway point of the season now we're in May, and it goes really quick. Once again, another chilly night, but dry for now. There's Luke Gellerman in his sixth season, and you know he's had to deal with some adversity, but he feels like these guys are trending in the right direction, and that's always positive. He's he's a neat guy to visit with. Yeah, he was real optimistic. He was talking about the kids came in as kind of you know athletes, and now he feels like they're, they're turning into lacrosse players. They've got that mentality now of playing the game and playing it right and doing it well, and he's gotten some good uh, uh, good outcomes too. He's got two wins this season, and uh, he's. Uh, the, the other ones are against the you know teams 14 and one, but he will uh, he's optimistic about tonight, um, and he knows the St. Champa Park team is going to be a challenge. And Armstrong's win over Totino Grace on April 24th, 11 to six, and then uh, on the 27th beat Spring Lake Park 18 to six. Their defeats coming at the hands of Elk River Zimmerman, Centennial, and Blaine, three of the top programs in the conference. Meanwhile, Champlain Park, you see Ben Blazer there in his third year. They're one and five. They had a very nice win over Totino Grace, dominating yeah. Totino Grace defensively nine to two. They just were able to hold them down all night. The Eagles really had no legitimately good scoring chances. 
And, you know, again, Coach Blazer was real optimistic, too. You know, two of his top three scorers are freshmen, for heaven's sakes. You know, uh, Drew Heimer and uh, Brett Lowry, uh, they pumped in 15 goals so far, and uh, but they exploded uh, the other night for nine goals against Latino. You know, their losses were against Maple Grove, Blaine, Irondale, and Spring Lake Park. And he, he mentioned Spring Lake Park might not have been all there, not quite ready to play that team. But the other three are, look, powerhouses in this league. So, um and he has maybe one of the best goaltenders in the state, as we, we talked about earlier. Yeah, Cody Uzerman was outstanding, making some great saves on Monday night. And Ben told us before the game, it's he he's our best player. You want to feature him. Yeah. You don't want to leave him exposed and let people get in close up front. And that's why that zone's been so effective and was so effective on Monday night. You know, all those shots came from the outside. He yep. had good looks. Yep. And, you know, it's unusual, too, in high school across here to see a own defense and it'll be fun to watch that and uh, coach Gellerman and Armstrong is well aware that they play that and uh, he's gonna it's a challenge to his Falcons to solve that riddle how are they going to get inside because you know shooting from the outside and Iserman isn't really going to get it Iserman isn't going to get it no. done for you no and he, he's one of those guys that you know can handle all the shots some goaltenders are good up high but you know he's able to switch gears and get down low and block shots as well and that's a huge advantage his counterpart on the other side is a sophomore in Colin Johnson and you know for for new goaltenders at this level it is a big challenge because uh it, you're, you're going to take some hot shots well he's uh he comes in two wins two losses uh missed the fifth game but uh we're going to try somebody else, but uh, he's working with a 7.50 goals against average. Now, in, in lacrosse, yeah, it doesn't seem like much. In lacrosse, that's big. That's huge. If you can hold the team under, you know, double figures. I mean, Steve, we've seen when these offenses get rumped up, they could put 15, 20 goals in. And here's the first face-off of the night, and it's controlled by Champlin Park. Devin Miller wins the first face-off of the night. Very important. And the Rebels get set up in the attack zone. Down to our right, wearing gray and navy, of course. Armstrong wearing... Uh, the red jerseys tonight, as you might expect on the road. Here's a guy, Devin Miller, who had two goals in that win over Totino on Monday night as they get it set up. And, and the Rebels did a good job controlling zone time. Now that one's knocked away by Armstrong. Good defensive play in the middle there by the Falcons. And now a scramble as uh, someone tries to gain control, and ultimately Armstrong does. And Ben Kennedy, and then he loses a handle. And we have a slip and a fall. And we're, you're going to see that from time to time. We saw it on Monday night as well uh, when I was at the game here at Champlin Park. Footing is going to be a problem. And now carrying the other way is Trenton Jacobson. And then he loses it. The Rebels, you know, very aggressively, even though they set up in that zone, they will come out and challenge, especially in the middle of the field. Now Armstrong gets it set up in the attack zone, and here's Carter Lucas. Lucas is dangerous. Yeah, they're very well aware of him. They'll keep their eye on uh, number 21. There's Campion down on the goal line extended, and the Rebels knock it away. They take advantage of the turnover, and here's Connor Hammer Capitan, and now the Rebels charging the other way, and then they get have it knocked away from behind. Good defense there by Nick Haugen, and now Armstrong on the attack again. Here's Campion. Campion gets it down, and it's stolen away by the Rebels. Good play by the long stick there. They see the effect, and this is the zone. They, had, they get aggressive defensively outside. Pop ball comes in, and the DR is, is reading it and has the flexibility to move off a man and go get the ball and did a great job that time. Ben Ringler. And these teams just going back and forth. No one can get set up. They get it down low, and they go over the top of the net. Well, that was a quick shot there. Taken by Volkert. And Volkert got right in on the goaltender and he tried to go up high and went over the net. Yeah, Volkert's their third leading scorer with five goals. Uh, he's somebody to watch. They're looking for him to start expanding and scoring a little bit more. Here's Carter up high again. No go there. Or uh, Carter Lucas, a senior. And one of the things Luke Gellerman talked about before the game was losing a three senior attack. Men from a year ago, and that, that's hurt their scoring punch at times. But Campion's been good. Lucas has been good. Well, they took Campion. He was a midfielder last year, and they, they put him in attack, and he's really thrived on it. He's got 22 goals this year, so. All right, we got a big collision 
Campion just runs over, I believe, Cooper Bagsley. And Armstrong's going to hang on. Rebels won't go a man down, but Armstrong hangs on. Incidental contact, if you will. But both players went down. I think the cold's affecting both teams, Steve. We've seen a lot of turnovers here. A lot of balls on the ground, a lot of missed balls. Uh, hopefully that'll improve as the game goes on, as the guys get a little more warmed up. Voorhees comes back to Campion near side. Now behind goes Neil Jurgensen. And they just kind of work the perimeter. And, you know, this is a lot of what I saw on Monday night when Champlin Park played Totino Gray. Is they just don't let teams into the middle at all. Campion dodges a couple of hits oh. and pulls the trigger and beats the goaltender. And it's 1-0 Armstrong. That was a power move. It was a nice move. He got around power through two people when that double team came. He got it to separate, and he got a little opening, and he let him wind up, and he came back across his body, top, bottom. You can see him come through here. One hit, breaks the other one, and then here he gets a little bit of a clearing and just lets it rip. When that stick gets that much torque on it, it's really rolling on you. And it goes down and bounces. And that's tough for any goalie to stop. And the field is very firm. They put sand down. Uh, there, there was rain, of course, earlier in the day, but it is still a very firm surface. I wouldn't call it no. muddy or sloppy yeah. at all. Time of the goal, 323. Campion puts Armstrong in front. And once again, he used his size to get inside, bounced off a couple of rebels, and gets the goal. And now we've got the all important face off. Once again, Devin Miller uh, battling in there. And the, the other face off man in there is Ryan Anderson. And Anderson will come off. Face off, get off. And he gets uh, some high fives on the. On the bench, and why not? Because Armstrong wins their first face-off of the game, and that's so important. Nice clean sweep backward to Josh Reiner, who picked it up and brought it in. Voorhees, Champlin Park trying to come out of that. It, it, it really set up in a 3-3 zone against mm -hmm. Totino Grace. Here they're kind of mixing it up. They're trying to get someone outside, and they've got a man floating around in Shane McIntosh who's been kind of challenging the ball on the perimeter. And here he comes out to challenge Campion. Campion gets inside, gets it down behind the net. It really wasn't a shot. It was more of a pass down low. And now a battle coming over there to help out for Champlin Park is Ringler. And now it's Armstrong with it. They get it back. So they come out of that battle for the ground ball. And here's Campion down behind the net. And trying to force it in front was Jurgensen. He was turned away. Well, the Rebels aren't allowed any cutters coming through, really. They get in the middle, and they get cut. There's two people right on them at all times within stick length if you're down low. Lori Hees out on the right side, not a big guy. Got speed, of course. Huge weapon in this game. Here's Haugen. Campion gets the ball a lot, and why not? He's a big, strong kid. And goal number one just powered his way into the middle and got a good lane to shoot. And now they're going to switch it up and bringing in is Carter Lucas on the attack. Here's Campion from the right side. Fakes, rips a shot, and that goes high and goes out of play. But Armstrong's going to hang on because Jurgensen was deep. Well, and that's the problem with the zone, Steve. You're all packed in front of the net. You have no opportunity to outrace anybody for the ball. If you're not behind, they're off to the side. So, boy, Campion ain't afraid to shoot the ball, is he? No, not. He's got a good <laughs> shot, too. <laughs> yeah. Lucas with it on the right side. Gets it oh. to the side of the net. Jurgensen can't handle the pass. Now Campion kind of fans on one. He fights to get it back, and he does. Boy, he is so strong. He just... Got that back, and now the Rebels trying to deal with really the physicality of Armstrong here. And let's see if the Rebels can get it back as the goaltender fired out of there. And well, Iserman. Good try to the back door to Neil Jurgensen there. It was almost open, and uh, that could have been. If he could have got his, his cross on the ball, he could have, could have slammed it in real quick in one motion. Nice play. Lucas reverses to Haugen. Haugen loses it and then retrieves. Going out to challenge for a moment was Devin Miller for the Rebels, but he retreats. Here's Lucas. 
In the middle, works to the right, wants to shoot. It's knocked down by the goaltender. Somehow, Iserman got his stick on it, and now it comes out in front. Another save by Iserman. Wow, two big ones in a row. Two huge shots, too. Full force torque shots. Got a chance to wind up, and we didn't let it go, and he made two beautiful saves there. Hogan again for Armstrong. Falcons dominating early. They only lead it 1-0, but they have dominated the attack zone time. Now we got a timeout. I think Ben Blazer is going to bring him over and try and calm this guy down. They just cannot gain possession of the ball. Well, that's the problem with the zone. If, if you look at here, a beautiful save off the mm. side there. Got his basket, just the edge of the basket on it, actually, in that second save. But the problem with the zone, Steve, is that, you know, you lose a lot of opportunities to get turnovers and stuff because you're so compact, you're not really covering the whole field. And it makes it tough, so uh, you will probably see the Falcons, if the Rebels stay in the zone, maintain a lot of possession. And they're holding on to it well. They're not throwing it away at all. Yeah, they, they have been solid, and the Campion's been leading the way. He has the goal coming at 323. And for Armstrong, they play again on Friday. They will be at Maple Grove, and that will be a tall order when they play the Crimson on Friday. Absolutely, the Crimson have really been a powerhouse in the past five years here now in the, in the league, and uh, them and Blaine seem to really pick it up. Elk River's gotten way better, too, over the past few years, and uh, uh, so these other teams have had to scramble to keep up. You know, one thing we talked to Coach Gellerman about for Armstrong, too, really, and he wanted to start being more physical. He felt earlier in the season they were playing physical. They've kind of backed off a little bit, uh, especially in their, you know, loss to, uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, Blaine the other night and that uh, might have been a little bit of intimidation because Blaine's got a lot of good athletes but uh, you can see them even offensively now how physical they're getting with the Rebels uh, just the way Campion bulldogged his way through and, and you can see Lucas doing the same thing number 20 21 for uh, the Falcons yeah, and it is a good way to attack the zone if mm -hmm. you can't shoot from outside it's kind of like hoops in that way if you're not making shots or scoring from the outside you, you, you got to, in some way, shape, or form, find a way to attack it. And Campion has, with his physicality, he just bowled his way inside and got a good look and was able to beat Iserman for the 1-0 lead. Here's Armstrong out of the timeout. They maintain, and uh, they have been in the attack zone the lion's share of quarter number one. And Carter trying to loop around the net, tried to get it in front, picked up by Armstrong, another shot, and another save there. Oh, no, they oh, get a goal. It snuck by Iserman. He got a piece, but it got by him, and Armstrong makes it 2-0. Spencer Volkert getting a goal here. I think that's his sixth of the season. It is Volkert. And the time of that goal comes at 7.03, 7.07. Yeah, the ball came out to him. He, they missed the pass, and the ball came out to him. He had an opening, and as a lefty, he came through and had a shot on the inside there and got it into the net past the Iserman. So Volkert with the goal at 7.07 of quarter number two. And now the Rebels are going to switch it up in that faceoff. And let's see what they can do here. And it's another one won by Armstrong, and a good job on that faceoff by Ryan Anderson. Still a scramble for it, and he can't gain control. And push from behind on Champlin. It'll be the Falcons' ball. Looks like we have a Rebel hurt. Looks like Gerbald Weston. I didn't have a clean look at the number, but uh, he hobbles off. He's going to sit down, and it is Gerbald who's going to sit down and get some attention on the Rebel bench, and the Rebels have to try and uh, change it up a little bit because they just have had no attack zone time at all to speak of. Lucas slips, tries to gain his footing. He's uh, being hounded there by Hammer Capitan. They get it down low. It's in front of the goaltender, and Iserman finally scoops it up, and Iserman's going to go long down the field and get it ahead. Nice outlet pass to Bagsley. Good clear there. Bagsley down the field, rips it. Wow, oh, man. He's pumped up. Just like that, the Rebels on the board. Wow. Well, 
You know, Colin, Colin Johnson's been standing there getting cold, wind blowing right at him, Haven't, hasn't seen any action for what, good 10 minutes, Steve, or so, and good outlet pass here, picks it up, catches it clean, really rolls down the field good. And now watch the directly of the shot. Basically sidearm, underhand, Goalies don't usually see that. They see it coming over the top most of the time, so that was a bit of a change of direction for him. But he just ripped that. Went low, high, hit the upper left-hand corner. Time of the goal, 7.59. Baxley gets the Rebels on the board. So they still haven't had a ton of attack zone time, but they're down 2-1. to one. And that is a big goal here. And now another face-off. That's one of those shots where you better make it, otherwise the coach is not going to be happy with it. Good job by Armstrong to shovel it out of there. Anderson again got it ahead. And now all that matters is they win the faceoff. And he'll run off the field and they'll get set up. Here's Mason Varian. Varian on the outside. Long stick comes out to challenge him. He gets it ahead. Now down behind the net. Jurgensen's been doing that duty all night. Jurgensen trying to keep it away from Ringler. A long stick. And now they set it up on the perimeter, and here's Lucas. Just came onto the field. Lucas playing a little catch there with Voorhees. Voorhees getting dumb. Rebels a little bit more aggressive, Dan. Had to be. They can't keep playing defense like this. They can't keep letting the Falcons have all that time with the ball. They get it ahead. The long clear is picked up by Armstrong on their goal line. They get it to the goaltender, Johnson. So uh, the Rebels weren't able to do much there. Just get it out of the zone. It's almost picked off on the fly by Johnson, who had a couple of goals on Monday night against Totino. And here comes Armstrong again to get set up. Lucas, way outside, a shot and a goal. He had an alley and beat the goaltender, Iserman, and it's 3-1. to one. Well, the Falcons' top three scorers are showing up tonight between Campion and Lucas and Volkert. They're just ripping goals. They each got one here. Leading scorers on the team. And usually in a situation, you know, you, if you can identify who the scorers are, you, you cover them real hard. But this is from way outside. But, boy, I tell you what, Steve, these guys got some velocity on their shots. Yeah. And I like the bounce thing, too. I, this is, he isn't trying to straight shoot it in. He made a nice bounce. And, you know, Fisherman, that, that's a tough save to make. I don't care who you are, especially at that velocity. Riley Keller out there for the Rebels. One again by Anderson and he's just been the man in the faceoff circle and that came uh, uh, resulted in a quick shot for Armstrong it goes wide but the Falcons hang on well the Falcons are feeling it now they've got some goals from outside so they feel they can accomplish that so they're playing with a lot of confidence Champlin's got to open up that zone and get aggressive out there they're winding up with way too much velocity I mean they're getting total torque out of their shots Voorhees tries to skip one in on Iserman, goes wide right. Armstrong will hang on, and as Dan, you pointed out, they don't have anyone deep, so they're not going to get to that end line first, and as a result, Armstrong, more time in the attack zone. Voorhees goes to his left. Now they get it to Campion, way out on the left. Campion gets bumped, gets bumped again, ball down, picked up by Armstrong. Boy, they've been quick on the recovery. Here's Albrecht. Is off to his right. Well, the, part, the Rebels are packed in so tight. If anything bounces to the outside, all that's left out there is Falcons to pick it up as a ground ball. They get it down behind. Here's Jurgensen loses it, being hounded there by Ringler. Ringler battling. Another Falcon jumps in. Campion's there, and Campion's going to scoop. Picks it up with the right hand. Charges into the middle. Look out. And that one's blocked away. I think that was a save by Iserman. Yep. Power move, though, by Campion. He's a tall, lanky kid. Good speed. Well, he brings it. Iserman tried to get a basket on it. He just barely got it on it, and he couldn't control it, and it bounced out. Here's Carter Lucas joining the fray. Gives it over to Campion. He can't run it down. It's going to go out of bounds. Unforced error there. We'll take a look at shot of Campion coming around here. Gets an opportunity in tight. Yeah, basically, I think it was a leg save, basically, too. Came off his leg. Now the Rebels try and get it done. They try and get some time in the attack zone. They're getting hounded Campion all over. Schmidtbauer. Schmidtbauer, good feet ahead. There's a collision. Maintaining his feet, Roy Johnson. That one goes deep. 
and behind the end line, but the Rebels are going to hang on. So here's Lowry. Let's see what the Rebels can do. Pretty good shot by Roy Johnson. He had a couple of goals. Yeah, but he'll time. You know, let's move the ball around a little bit. Let's oh. play in their zone for a little while. Make them play defense a little bit. Don't just take the first opportunity once you get within 20 yards of the net. They get it to Lowry. Lowry turned away. And now they go further back to the outside. And here's Drew Heimer. Had the hat trick on Monday night against the Eagles. And now we've got a whistle. And what do we got here? Did somebody lose a uh, mouth, mouth guard? Yeah, yeah, he's got to come out. Yep. And going to the bench is Cooper Bagsley, Cooper Bagsley, who has a Rebels goal. That was a whale of a shot. And now here comes Champlin Park. Here's Heimer. Out at the center of the field, trying to get into the attack zone. He's being hounded. Goes to his right. And tries to get set up. You can see the coach, Luke Gellerman, urging his defense. Here's a shot, Johnson scores! Nice feed! Roy Johnson, the freshman, with another goal, and it's three to two. Number seven for him this year. He's had a good year, that'd be seven goals, three assists for him, 10 points, he's reached double figures and points. See a nice come around here. Referee kind of pulled a play to pick for Johnson, gave him an opening, and he let the shot go. And the minute he did, he got knocked, he got whacked pretty good. Body hit by one of the Falcons. And a goal late in the quarter, just 1.8 officially. We'll get a face off, but that was a big goal for the Rebels there. Well, we had about four rushes, five rushes into the Armstrong area, and they've got three go two goals out of it. So. That's a pretty good percentage. I take that anytime. So things tighten up a little bit here. Armstrong dominating the attack zone time, but only lead it. Three to two after one quarter. We'll be back to Champlin Park with boys lacrosse here on CCX. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Here at Champlin Park, Armstrong leading the Rebels 3-2. Campion, Volkert, and Lucas for the Falcons. Meanwhile, for the Rebels, Baxley and Johnson. And that one coming at 11.58. So in the nick of time, the Rebels get the goal and uh, things have tightened up. Well, I got a couple of the Rebels on their efficiency. They really haven't had the ball that much. But when they've gotten it, they made the most out of their opportunities here. Yeah, I would say at least 10 minutes of zone time in the attack zone for Armstrong. Yeah. They, they, they clearly dominated in that category, but Iserman has been good enough. And you made a great point, Dan, during the break about the field and how tough it is on the goaltenders. It's, it's really the tough hops. No, it is. I mean, the, the field is coming apart. You're slipping. But the other part of it is, is if you shoot that ball with velocity and bounce it, it does weird things coming off the turf. If you had a standard, you know, uh, textured, turf, artificial turf like we have in a lot of high schools, it bounces true. On this field, it ain't bouncing true. It goes off to the side on you a little bit. Ryan Anderson's been so good on the face-offs. Wins another one there at 4-1 Armstrong. And here comes Anderson the other way, right down the middle, gives it up on the right. Shot oh. and a goal. Wow, that's right off the face-off. Anderson feeds it. And Armstrong takes a 4-2 lead. That's textbook. That's just, that was a beautiful clear and moving the ball fast. Once they got the face off and Will Volkert, you know, left-hander, 
Watch the face off here. Pick it up. Beautiful. Oh, nice play by the, the uh, face off specialist there. Comes down. Now watch. He's going to make, he's got a good look at the field. He's going to make one pass to the left hander. He's got the stick on the inside there, and he just wheels and fires Volkert there. His second one of the evening. And finds the lower left hand corner. And, you know, the Falcons are not shooting up high at all, Steve. They're bouncing everything off that turf. They are going down low. And here's Anderson again, gets the better of it. Can he get the ground ball? No, he can't. The Rebels get it back. And I think that was Devin Miller over there and Miller going up the far sideline. Miller's got good power, played well on Monday night. And that uh, bails out Champlin Park. Because once again, right now, Ryan Anderson dominating in the faceoff circle. And then oh. there's an unforced error to the near side. Oh, yeah, Just a pass from Lowry over the head of Heimer and out of play. That stuff will kill you. Got a good chance to respond to that fourth goal by the Falcons and the Rebels, you just can't be throwing it away like that. So the Rebels try and pressure and they get it to the center of the field and they will carry over the center of the field and they give it up. And they're gonna switch personnel and Get organized offensively. Way out on the left there, it is Lucas. Carter Lucas has one goal, coming at 9-16 of the first. And Armstrong getting set up. Volker had the goal a moment ago, two in the game, as Dan mentioned. Now they get it out on top. They haven't gone to Campion so far. Campion down on the left, that's his favorite spot. Here he gets it. Now go behind the end line. This is Jurgensen. As they work the perimeter right now. Now we have a ground ball and an opportunity for the Rebels to get in there. Good job by the long stick. I don't know if he wants to kick it in front of the net there. That was Alex Sewell. And now it's picked up by Iserman, the goaltender. So Iserman, a outlet, goes a little too far. Can anyone gain control? We got another ground ball spot right in the faceoff circle. And here comes Armstrong. Nice play, nice kick pass there. Got it, out, got it out of the muck and got it in the cabin. Yeah, a lot of dirt in that center circle where the face-offs. As you might expect, that's pretty well chewed up here midway through the season. And now Armstrong once again dominating the zone time, leading it 4-2. to two. The Rebels haven't had much of an answer here. They go right in the middle. Nice pass, knocked down by the Rebels. Goes behind the net. And we got... I believe someone in the crease, what yeah. do you see, Dan? Yep. And here we go, outlet pass to the center of the field, picked up by the Rebels. Here comes Champlin Park, and they get something set up on the attack. This is Baxley, he has a goal. First goal for the Rebels. Now he goes out on top, Riley Keller. The Rebels try and work the perimeter, go down behind the net. And I come to the near side, and Heimer. Heimer had the hat trick Monday. Hasn't had a shot here. Now the Rebels begin a charge on the right side. Turned away is Keller. And the Rebels go back behind. Now it's Heimer. He just doesn't have any room out there. He's getting hounded by the defender in the long stick there. Good defensive play by Zach Lucas. Lucas was all over him. Oh, nice defensive play. That was a great stick check there. Yeah, good job by Armstrong. Here they come the other way. Jacobson carries it ahead. And now Armstrong gets it set up. I believe that Campion thought about a shot and didn't. And now Campion tries the right side. He gets it down low, right in on the goaltender. Iserman was there. With the big basket. Nice outlet pass ahead. Here's Schmidt Bauer. Schmidt Bauer right down the middle of the field. Gives it up. Heimer can't handle the pass. Oh boy. Too bad. Drew Heimer couldn't knock down the high pass. They had numbers, Steve. They had they had him out, man. It was an odd man rush. They could have really gone after. Just the errant passes. They're having a real hard time just getting him down. They're throwing everything over the top. Carter Lucas. So dangerous. Has goal number three. 
Gave them a three to one lead at that point in time in quarter number one. Now they get it into the middle. It's knocked away nicely by the Rebels. Good defensive play. And now flips it back toward the middle of the field. Armstrong picks it up. We got a battle. Knocked away there by the Rebels. Roy Johnson on the near side picked up. Here's Lucas. Hammer Camp and Tan all over him. They get it inside and they go wide. That was a shot by Campion, but it goes wide of the goaltender Iserman. A little off balance when he shot it due to that shot from uh, Hammer Camp Capitan. Armstrong setting up behind the net, trying to run a play. Jurgensen does a nice job behind the net. I like that, that long pole 16 for the Rebels. He stuck that stick right in his chest plate, which is legal. Shane McIntosh. Here's Lucas. And a goal! Carter Lucas with his second of the night. He came right down the middle. And there's not a lot of goaltender can do there. Well, Lucas and Campion are just showing their strength and their size. They're busting double teams. They're cutting that zone to pieces. Watch the cut here. Bang. Breaks a double team right there. Holds it so the stick doesn't get too whacked and just winds up and gets a good shot. I mean, that's just good play. I mean, what are you going to do? Time of the goal, 5-16, now 5-2. Armstrong and Champlin Park in a spot where they need a goal and get a little confidence back. They, they want to keep uh, Lucas and Matt Campion out of the attack zone for a while. Well, it's kind of tough, too, to go back to a man-to-man -man in those two guys because, you know, be honest with you, they're busting double teams, Steve. I don't know if they can hand, they, there is a one-on-one -on -one situation they can't beat. So a good job by Anderson to control the faceoff, but Baxley for Champlin Park picks it up. We got a high hit here. No whistle, and now a flag, and the Rebels are going to go a man down. No doubt about that. God, Coming he, to the side is Ringler. <laughs> he didn't even hesitate once that uh, whistle blew. He knew he was going to get one, but... He's got a little attitude there. I like that. Long poles, you know, be afraid. You come into my territory, you're going to get it one way or the other. So Ringler takes a knee, and now Armstrong's going to get it. They are a man up here, leading 5-2. to two. They've scored two goals in a row. And that is a cross check, and we all saw it. And, that, and that's one in the future you can show people this is what you can't do. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> Perfect right. example, right on tape. Oh, man. So ben Blazer looks at the tape with the team and shows the young guy, yeah, you can't do that. And they get it inside and blocked by Iserman. Boy, they got it in tight. And Iserman stonewalls champion on the side, and that's a huge save, a man down. Now can the Rebels clear? We got... Loose ball, and we got a shove, and Champlin Park's going to yeah. get it back as Devin Miller goes down hard. Oh, yeah, just ripped it, but a great angle. Yep. Great angle by Iserman. He took that off his legs. He uses his body very well. It stung him, too. Trust me, that shin got a little ring into it now. Armstrong gets it back. Here's Campion behind the net, off to the side. Volkert, and there's still a man up. Here's his shot. They tried to go short side on Iserman, and it goes, and Iserman was able to jump out of there and get to the end line first and get deep, and Champlin Park's going to get it back. So uh, good news for the Rebels. Looks like they may survive this man down spot. They couldn't afford to go behind 6-2 to two here early. Nice. They move to the outside, Rebels carry it, and then the long stick loses it out of bounds, and Armstrong gets it right back. That's a shame, because he did make a nice move to the sideline. He had two good moves. He was coming through, but then one little stick check on the bottom half of his hands to knock that ball out of play. Oh, big collision over there, and fighting his way through it. Is that Campion? No, Campion's down low. That's uh, Lucas. Lucas, cheaper. Carter, Lucas, Campion. Now gets it back into the middle, and it's stolen back. Here's Lucas, big physical play. And now Champlin Park trying to move it out of there neatly. Some shots. And once again, Armstrong. Nick Haugen picks it up. 
And now it's going to go right back to Champlin Park. Well, as you mentioned, Luke Gellerman, before the game, we want to play more physical. They have been physical. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Carter Bush. Oh, my. Luke, is, I, that was just impressive. I mean, it's coming down that sideline. It was like, yeah. All right, Johnson gets a shot away. Bidding for goal number two for him on the night. Goes out of play on the end line. Champlin Park hangs on. Here's Heimer. Rebels need a goal. They've been shut out yep. here so far in the quarter. Here's Heimer. Gets toward the middle of the field. Can't get around the long stick. That's Schisler. Good play there by Schisler. Ha- had him fronted the whole time. And now it's Roy Johnson again. Moves to the outside, trying to rip a shot. He does, but it goes well wide. And way down deep is Aaron Moldan. Uh, making good decisions here. They're not trying to take a shot when they got a long pole on them. When they get a short stick on them, then they're working to get a shot. They get it out on top. Here's Roy Johnson again. Johnson, left-handed shot. Rips it by the goaltender. Goes over the end line. Champlin Park will continue to maintain. Not a bad strategy. Oh, no. Why not? I mean, they've been successful on the long shots, and you know they got confidence in it. Why not? And they're trying to feed Roy Johnson, the freshman here. He had two goals Monday, a goal tonight, another shot. That goes wide, but the Rebels are deep. No problem. Now, if you notice on that last one, they had a long stick going out on Johnson. Now, as long as they keep feeding and they, they finally put a long stick on him, and uh, hopefully that will control him a little bit better. They come out on top. Here's Schmidt Bauer. Schmidt Bauer works to the right, spins, loses his footing. Now back to the right. Now they go down to the end line. Did Armstrong knock it down defensively? Yep. Lowry yep. over there fighting for it. Moldan, and now Armstrong's going to control. Good defensive play by the Falcons, and now we have a flag, and someone's going to go a man down here. I think Chapel Park. Armstrong's maintained possession, I believe. From the looks of it. And now we got a oh, timeout time as we sort it out. But we did, we did have yeah, a flag, flag on the flag field, on the field. there, so I'm wondering who's going to be the man to go down. 3-2 after one, now 5-2 Armstrong. Volkert is second of the game, and now Lucas is second. So the goals here in quarter number two, and Armstrong leads at 5-2, but very physical. It's been uh, entertaining, too. Yeah, well... I'll tell you what, I can see why Coach Kellerman wanted to get physical when you got, you know, an Amity and the Tackman that are that big and can muscle themselves through like they've been showing us between Lucas and Campion. Uh, that was fairly impressive. You know, but here we got another error. Now watch the nice move here by the D. Nice pull up on the hands there. Nothing illegal with that. Just got good control. That's just good long stick play. And that's Matt Campion's brother, Joe, Joe Campion, yeah. back there. And good play by him. And that was just smart and good stick technique with a long pull there, working it. He looked for his openings. He saw it, got a chance to look at some hands. And he got the stick there, and he got the ball loose. Once again, stick, gloves, okay. Yep. Anything beyond that's a slash. Right. So you can work the stick or the gloves. And he did a good job and really good leverage there as well. He's a big kid, Mm -hmm. like his brother Matt. And we still haven't seen anyone take a knee by the scorer's table. I don't know what the flag was here, but Ben Blazer trying to figure it out, coming over the Champlin Park coach, Luke Gellerman. And now we have the official signaling. I still don't see anyone taking a knee. Okay. We had a flag. All right. Well, I'm not sure what the flag was all about, but neither team will go a man down as we close on on three to go in the quarter. I think the Falcons called a timeout before the flag came out. Maybe. Oh, I don't know. No, I don't remember that. No. Interesting. Okay. Whatever. We're back to playing again. Here's Carter Lucas. Long pass to the near side. That's Haugen. Haugen back to Lucas. And, of course, uh, Matt Campion set up down low left. Watch out for him. 
Lucas slips, goes down, pops back up, gets bumped again, loses it. Good defensive play by Champlin Park taking the body there. But let's see if we've got a whistle, and we do. And the Rebels have someone who's going to take a knee. And that's going to be Brett Lowry. Champlin Park goes a man down for the second time here in the quarter. And that is Lowry and a big advantage. Again for Armstrong. The only two wow. goals in quarter number two. Did he call it illegal body contact on that? Geez, Lowry took the worst of that hit. He got knocked flat and yeah. it's, it's Fanny. Well, wow, interesting. He okay. ran into the big guy. Usually mm -hmm. it's the bigger guy who gets the... <laughs> And being a smaller guy, Steve, yeah. I understand that completely. <laughs> oh, man. Campion turned away. He spins out of there, goes back out on top. Armstrong trying to extend that lead. They get it into the middle. Quick shot and a goal. Nice pass as they go further inside. And who else? Volkert, Volkert. with his third. Boy, Volkert's really come alive here tonight, Steve. He's really putting it in the net. It was a nice placement here, too. Look at how he finds that opening. See him sliding over there? Oh, watch mine. See, he slid right down in the open hole and took that left hand and took the shot. Time of the goal, 9.46. Volkert is third, and the assist there to Jurgensen. And that was, that was nice. Volkert. Another senior on this roster. Well, Coach, Go Coach Gullerman said that his upperclassmen have really been coming on lately. The last couple games they've been stepping up to the plate, and boy, they're really showing it tonight. And I've been impressed by their face-off specialist, Ryan Anderson. He's done a phenomenal job here tonight and has had the better of it. Rebels trying to control. It's kicked into the attack zone. And the Rebels pick it up. Heimer along the near sideline. So the Rebels get some zone time. And they need a goal. They have been shut out here in quarter number two. Johnson goes down to the end line. And trying to save it is oh, Moldan. Boy. Moldan wags it ahead. And it's picked up by Armstrong. Tough break for the Rebels. No, that's just did that. No, that's. They got to they gotta stop it. They got to get more discipline. They got to set their feet when they make passes. They can't be running. You know, being off balance and make pass, that's just making him fly up, fly high all the time. Johnson, the goalie, tries to carry it ahead. He loses it. Oh. Now they've got an opportunity. Heimer, we got a rebel down on the field, a scramble for the ball. Someone took a big shot out there. Penalty. Moldan got leveled for the rebels. And let's see what's going to happen here. Contact and checking is allowed, but... They have a th oh, that's that's an illegal body check. Oh my gosh, totally. And I yeah. think that was Joe Campion, and he's going to take a knee. Campion just smoked Moldan. Woo! Here we go, great. It, it's always been funny to me watching lacrosse, Steve, because they say you know you can check. There's there's physicality, but it's they don't tell you it's a degree of physicality. You, know, you can't go out and level somebody like. Uh, that what we just saw. Yeah, Joe Campion taking a knee, and now the Rebels an opportunity. Miller, Johnson, Moldan out on top. There's Heimer. He'll get it back. Had an alley, decided not to shoot. Rebels trying to get a good look. They're on the six on five. Lowry, shot. Oh, blocked away. Nice save by Johnson. That was Heimer who pulled the trigger. And the Rebels are going to maintain. The shot there. Nice basket foot save right there. I like to see the Rebels close this box up a little more. There's an opening right there to the far side. Oh, they get a cutter oh, and a goal. There we go. Miller. Nice ball movement by the Rebels. Miller cutting in on the goaltender. Catch and shoot. And the Rebels are on the board. And that comes once again late. They got a goal with two seconds left in quarter number one. They get one with 33.3 left here. Well, you saw a nice cut right down to the side. You see it go back outside, back down the middle, and over and across. The cutter coming in. See him just driving in there. Got himself in the middle in good position and just ripped it. 
Time of the goal, 11:27 for the Rebels, and that was key for them. Schmidtbauer the assist, and that was a good catch and shoot. And in space in the middle, that's not easy. No. Draw goes in over the line toward the Armstrong attack zone. They're still fighting for it. And now it's finally controlled by Armstrong. Here's Steinke. Jack Steinke gets it ahead. And with time running out here in the quarter, can Armstrong get a good look? Matt Campion over on the far sideline. Campion beats a double team. Loses it. Ball down. Are they going to get a shot? No. That's it. We are at the half, and Armstrong scores three of the four goals and lead it 6-3 to three at the half. But, boy, these teams have been battling tonight. Well, like I said, Champlain's being more efficient, but they're just not getting many opportunities and too many unforced errors. they got to start settling down with the ball, get their feet planted correctly when they move the ball or pass the ball because they tend to sky it over the person they're trying to hit it with. You know, Armstrong has been... You know, just good and discipline. They know what they're doing. Each player's playing within their strong physical means. Uh, they're just what I would call bully gold, Steve. And <laughs> they've done a great job with it. We are at the half. Robin Steele Armstrong leading Champlain Park. Boys lacrosse here on a Wednesday night on CCS. have to be so strong strength is not optional this is my mother my purpose real muscle is lifting her spirits between bedpans and bad news from doctors that doubt her strength strength is buried in bills managing meds and swallowing those moments of mom it's me your daughter remember my strength is super but i'm still human right find support for your strength visit aarp.org caregiving for care guides and community We are at the half, and Armstrong leading Champlain Park 6-3. to three. Boys lacrosse here on a Wednesday night, and we're going to take a look at the highlights here. Armstrong, uh, flat out, in 24 minutes of game time, has dominated the yeah. attack zone time. And they played well defensively as well. They haven't given Champlain Park much. Here's Campion, uh, so physical tonight. He got knocked to the deck early on, and then Campion just battled through a double team beat Iserman for the first goal of the game. And then there's Volker giving it, uh, Armstrong a 2-0 lead. And you, you can see how Campion's just kind of dominated with his size. Nice save there by Iserman. He's been really good. And they, they have been taking a lot of shots at Iserman. And then uh, finally the Rebels. Nice outlet here from Iserman to Baxley. And Baxley just goes right down the field and beats the goaltender. Goes down low and rips it. That's a great shot. Tremendous shot. A lot of torque to it. Coming at a really odd angle that a goalie will very rarely see. And it fooled him. It was a great shot. And then here's Lucas over on the right side. Rips one by Iserman. Boy, he just skipped it by him. And that's tough on a, a chewed up field like this we are seeing tonight at Champlain Park. Then Roy Johnson late in the first quarter gets a goal there to make it three to two after one. And then uh, face off circle really dominated by Ryan Anderson. Boy, what a, yep. what a play here. Yep. As Anderson goes through the double team and gets it ahead to Volkert. Volkert rips it by Iserman. And that made it four to two at that time. That's just a beautiful play off the faceoff. And then Lucas here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just try and stop me. Go ahead. Yeah. Boy, he just muscled that one in. And then a nice feed ahead uh, here to Volker. He gets another goal. And then late, uh, the Rebels move it around beautifully 
and a feed from Schmidtbauer to Miller, and the Rebels cut the lead to six to three. So a very entertaining first two quarters here tonight, and Champlin Park's got to find a way to get a little bit more attack zone time in quarters three and four. Well, they got to figure out Ryan Anderson. I mean, yeah. they got to beat the faceoff specialist for the Falcons because he's been dominating them. He has a clue of what he's doing. He knows what he wants to do. He doesn't do the same thing each time. He'll pair up with a guy to try to get the ball in his area. He'll just pull it back behind him and go get it. You saw him break that double team. Actually, it was a triple team. So that's been the first thing that Champlin's got to do. And if they can do that, they'll get more opportunities. Number two, stop throwing the ball away. No. Turnovers are killing him right now. And he's just got to do that. And the Falcons, well, they got to tighten up their deal a little bit. I mean, Champlin hasn't had a lot of face time inside their zone, but you know what? They've gotten some goals, and uh, the seams that have been left open by the Falcons has cost them. Third quarter coming up. Armstrong leading Champlin Park 6-3. to three. It is boys lacrosse here on the CCS. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Armstrong leading Champlin Park, 6-3. to three. Third quarter coming up here. On the real stuff, natural grass here in all the schools in District 11. And the field uh, seen better days. Uh, <laughs> it's in really rough shape. They got a lot of work to do in time for the fall sports season. Uh, let's, let's leave it at that. Challenge for the goaltenders tonight. But it's really been the story of Armstrong, ton of attack zone time six goals to show for it champlin park very little attack zone time and they're still in it yeah i mean if champlin starts winning some face-offs and stuff throwing the ball away they get right back into this thing and there's a good start right there ryan anderson controlled the face off but the rebels were able to pick it up in their defensive zone and now they're trying to get a clear here ben ringler who had to take an E earlier, trying to get it ahead to Devin Miller. Miller being double teamed, gets it over the center of the field and gets it into the attack zone. Miller on the far side goes down hard. Looks like he tripped and really fell. Right, Is there a push? Miller comes. Oh. Let's see. He got, you know, well, well, they legs got crossed up. Yeah, they just got stick on it, and he went down. It just took him off balance because he's leaning so far forward. But I think there should be Falcon ball. But the Rebels nope, are going to hang on. Okay. So Armstrong doesn't go a man down. They do go a man down, taking a knee there. He is so Ryan like, Anderson. Looks like a push from behind with possession. That would be a merit of penalty. Rebels controlling, trying to get it set up. Once again, Armstrong, a man down, six on five right now. This would be a big spot. Roy Johnson with it. Here's a shot. Oh, what a save by Colin Johnson, the Armstrong goaltender. Skipped in on him. Now we've got a long oh. clear ahead. Beautiful pass. This is Reinhardt. Reinhardt gives it up, oh, and what a shot. Man. Matthew Campion. Just got an egg. This got a, the defense kind of slid a little bit too far to his left and gave Campion an opening, and he slicked it right into the right side of the net. Watch this pass right here. Now we get a good angle. Look at that shot. Look at where it went. That's, I think, the first one we've seen all night, Steve, that actually went directly into that. No bouncing. Look at that. That's just sheer velocity. Wow. A laser beam at 109.73 Armstrong, and the way they were able to work it down the field. 
goaltender ahead. To Reinhardt. Reinhardt feeds it to Campion, and Campion rips it by 7 3. They went the length of the field in two passes, and now there's a faceoff controlled by Armstrong cleanly there. And the man who had the assist, Josh Reinhardt, had it, loses it, but Armstrong now controls and coming on the field, big Carter Luke is the senior. He's been really good tonight. Lucas has a couple of goals. And Lucas waits for changes to be made. Also trotting onto the field now is Haugen. As they work the far side. Campion now behind the net. Matthew Campion, the guy behind the net, trying to spin inside the double team. Quick shot, no. Goes over the end line. And Armstrong's going to control. The netminder, Iserman tried to get back there but couldn't. Now Campion further down low gets it out to Jurgensen. He spent a lot of time behind the net in quarters one and two. Lucas charges in, goes right of the net too far. But that'll go over the end line. Are they going to give it to the Rebels? They will. Yep. yep. They will give it Looks to like the Rebels. It did go out. Or he was stepping out of bounds when, he's, when he touched the ball. So the Rebels get a break, and now they need to get a little attack zone time here. They're having a hard time clearing. Here's Campion coming over. Good job there, and then they throw it away on the far side, and that's another run for his stare. A good D by the, by the Falcons. They're just not giving them enough time, and the Rebels aren't getting away from their, their men. And now Armstrong gives it right back. So trouble on the far side for both teams. And now here come... Champlin Park in on the net, a shot. That skips by the goaltender and out of play. And that was an attempt by Drew Heimer. Heimer had the hat trick Monday against Totino Grace. He's been held scoreless tonight. Kind of a bad angle shot. I like the way he switched hands and took a shot to get a stick on the inside, but boy, that was a bad angle. Now here's Johnson. Puts it over on the left. Now they go down to Moldan. And Lowry behind the goal line. Out of the near side. Bagsley. He has that goal from earlier. Really a good shot. Great shot. Heimer cruises in. Shot blocked by Johnson. Went down, got the body in front, then it pops right back into his net. Two, two. Nice. A nice stop and a nice control. And now Armstrong on the attack. Here's Lucas, a shot. Oh, a kick save by Iserman. What a save as the goaltenders trade big saves. Ehrlichman. Nice play to avoid the check there. He guy was aware of the guy coming up behind him. This guy's going to end to end here in quarter number three. Armstrong still in command, seven to three. This is Schmidt Bauer. Schmidtbauer shot goes well wide. Here we go, Gray. Here we go. And that goes over the end line. Good break there for the Rebels. Oh, Rebels a little too much one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, we're seeing some, some good opportunities and stuff, but maybe passing, coming to one side to the right, bring it back to the left to an open player. Boy, great save there, too, by Isner. Both goalies right now in the second half have really put on a good, good show. All right, so they stop it. I'm not sure if there was an issue with the clock or what. Yeah, the clock, scoreboard clock is yeah, behind yeah. us. Yeah. All right, so here we are. Now it's Caden Walters. Way out in the face-off circle. And now here's Walters showing speed to the near side. Goes down to the end line. That's Lowry. Walters gets it back. The Rebels try on top. This is Schmidt Bauer. They lose it. And here comes Armstrong. Good defense by the Falcons. Now it goes to the far side, and it's saved. Saved inbounds. Armstrong maintains. Is this Lucas? Yep. I think it is. Yep. Carter Lucas spins out of a double team. Shot. And a save by Iserman. Got down low. Nice save there. Schmidt Bauer back the other way for the Rebels. He's on the move. It's into the attack zone. Goes to the side. 
Lowry trying to get it into the middle. Is this one going to get out of play? No. Rebels are able to run it down before it goes out of bounds. Far side. And they'll get it set up. Well, they've had a little more zone time here in the third band. Yeah, they're, they're just trying to force it a little bit too much. That last pass in the middle, the, the guy just wasn't there. Don't, uh, that, that's the easy way to throw it away. Don't force it. Create your own openings. Wait for the cutter to be open, beating his man. Heimer goes to the right. Schmidtbauer down below the end line of Lowry. Rebels behind the net. Go to the left. Trying to spin in. Nothing doing there. Stout defense. Armstrong's a little bigger. No doubt defensively, they've got the size. Heimer gives it up in the middle. Someone gets dropped from behind and then dropped again. That's Schmidtbauer. And Armstrong throwing their weight around a little bit here. And the refs are starting to call it. Most of it's, a little bit of that's been from behind, though. And uh, uh, that is a no-no in lacrosse. No hits from behind, either with or without possession. Drew Heimer goes way down below the end line, behind the goal, trying to find room. Can't really find it. Spins out of there. Good quickness there. Heimer, oh. shot. Oh. That was blocked by oh. the defender. And picked up by Armstrong. Aaron Moldan had worked himself free on the right-hand side. They just could have got it back over to him. And that double team came, that slide at the Falcons. Had, somebody's got to be open because they're playing a man-to-man. Armstrong back on the attack, leading by a four. Shot and a goal. Oh, big-time shot from the right side. Beats Iserman. And with the goal there is Trenton Jacobson. The make it 8-3, and the Rebels talking about it. Jacobson just walked right in and uncorked one. Freshman D, I'll tell you what, he just lets it go. Oh, you, oh it, if you think it comes off hard on a, on a short stick, just think of that six-foot stick, how much torque bring that brings, what velocity we're looking at. He just ripped it. Beautiful shot. And even an outstanding goaltender like Gizerman had no shot there. Time of the goal, 624. And now it's 8-3 to three Armstrong. And that was, whew. And I don't care how good a goaltender you are. That is, I wouldn't that's want to a stand laser. I wouldn't no. want to stand in that net with that. That's coming at me. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's a laser beam. Once again, Ryan Anderson, so good. In that face-off circle for Armstrong. In a battle right now, trying to get leverage. There's from both sides, join the fray. Looked like Champlin Park may have got the better of it. They're still trying to gain control. Cooper Bagsley fighting for it. And now it does go out of bounds, and the official's right there, and it's going to rule at the Rebels. Rebels. Yeah. Champlin Park, and they need a goal. Once again, they've been shut out. They are able to get... A goal late in the first, late in the second. Well, their goals have come, two of their three goals have come late in the first two quarters. Armstrong continues to dominate zone time. Rebels a little better in that category here in the third. And keep moving the ball around. Keep moving around. Get the defense to shift. See uh -huh. if you can get a slide and take advantage of it. Oh, Roy Johnson slip, loses a handle, and then the Rebels get a break when it goes out of bounds off Armstrong. Yeah, these long sticks for Armstrong have played very, very well tonight. They have been tough. Very physical. They've given the Rebels no room. Roy Johnson on the near side. Throws it out toward the center for Caden Walters. But Walters, no one near the center line. Walters tries to get to the middle. Can't get around the defender. And now goes down below the end line. Here's Lowry. And now Heimer. Heimer the junior. Works off a pick. Spins to the middle, gets inside, shot goes wide. Pretty good move though. Yeah, good spin move and he switched hands, went from righty to lefty. Got the shot up, he just didn't hit the net. Went righty, now he's on his left hand. Oh, he worked himself into a good shooting area. Here's Johnson in the middle. Johnson tries the shot and gets the goal. Oh, Johnson works to his left, beats the goaltender. Colin Johnson from Armstrong. He has his second of the night, and it's 8-4. Well, he's got one from his left side, and he got his first goal on from his right side. 
That's a good skill level here. You can see him coming on now. He's got his on the left hand, left side of his with his stick, left-handed, and just rips it. I think Johnson was screened there. Time of the goal is 7.57 here in the third. And now it's 8-4. to four. That was a big goal for the Rebels. They hadn't scored in a while. They needed one. He had two Monday, two tonight. So Roy Johnson, just a freshman. And boy, future is bright for that young man. Well, Champlin's got some young players on this team, Steve. They're going to be good in the next few years. Rebels control a draw. And getting it done was Devin Miller. Miller goes up the far side, and Champlin Park trying to get a little momentum going. Miller charges behind the net. Goes right in the middle. Oh, too far, and it's going to go over the center of the field and be picked up by Armstrong. Unforced air there by the Rebels. Miller trying to do a little too much on the attack. Stepping into the middle, or trying to, and skipping it by. And I think that may have been Campion over on the right. That may have been Matthew Campion trying the shot. He had the first goal of the game and the first goal here in the third. And now here's Armstrong trying to get set up. Where he is. It's a down low. And now this is Campion. Campion spends lion's share of the attack zone time here on the left or down low behind the goal line. He's kind of switched off a little bit with Neil Jurgensen down below the goal line. And now they're trying to restore a little order up. 8-4, under three to go here in the third. Here's Campion, watched by a long stick. Spins down toward the goal line, then goes behind the net. Now they'll work the right. Rebels trying to pack it in again in front of Iserman. They get it down oh, inside. Nice. And then the battle to the end line, and Armstrong's going to maintain. But they were able to get someone, kind of sneak someone in to the left of Iserman. Mm -hmm. They went up high, and they went, came back down low real quick. It's the first time they've tried that move tonight, and it fooled most of the Rebels. Voorhees slides on this natural grass field. Long stick trying to pick it up for Champlin Park there was Shane McIntosh. And now it's controlled here by Jurgensen. And now they go to the far side. And once again, Armstrong, plenty of zone time here. We got a ground ball. No one can grab it and contain it. Now finally picked up by Champlin Park. And Connor Hammer Capitan, and then it goes out of bounds. And I think the Rebels are going to get it for good, and they will. They will, yeah. Schmidtbauer. Joseph Schmidtbauer here, junior. And now let's see what the Rebels can do here with Ben Ringler. He's usually on the defensive end, a long stick. And now he'll retreat. And now they get it set up. This is Schmidtbauer. 8-4. Closing in on the final oh. minute. They get it inside. And it goes right by the goaltender. These Rebels are showing some creativity in their shots. Got in the middle there and came at uh, side underhand, basically. Missed the net, but creative shot. Four goals in limited attack zone time. That's Baxley. He tries to set a pick there. Unsuccessful. Here's Heimer. Drew Heimer on the move. Double team comes. He'll back away. Think better of it. You know he wanted to shoot. And he loses it. Had it poked away from behind. Good job defensively by Armstrong. As you pointed out, Dan, the long sticks have been really good. They're good. They wait for their opening, and then they just get you on the hands. You get the stick, and bang, they got the ball. And I think it was Big Joe Campion. I think so, too, yeah. And he has been a force back there. He laid a big hit on earlier in the game. I'm uh, thinking Beast might be appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you want to know where he is. Oh, well, yeah, keep your head up. Here's Matt Campion, goes down to Anita Blockett, now picks it up. He's out on top. 
Matt Campion, he's got power, moves to the right. Turned away by the Rebels, tries to come into the middle. We got a ground ball, loose ball, fought four. And that's the end of the quarter. Three in the books here at Champlin Park. And Robin Stale Armstrong leads the Rebels eight to four. Quarter number four coming up in a moment here on CCX. What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood or when people know your name? Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. As life gets busier than ever, we will still offer you a connected community experience through CCX Media, so you can stay connected to the place you call home. Most party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. Thanks so much for joining us on this Wednesday night. Boys Lacrosse here on the CCX. Steve Thompson, Dan Ficken, an entertaining game. Armstrong leading Champlin Park 8-4. When the Rebels have been able to get into the attack zone, they've been pretty effective. Yeah. Armstrong, eight goals tonight. It could be a whole lot more. Cody Iserman's been, uh, or lived up to the billing as a goaltender tonight. Well, uh, he's run into a real triumvirate of uh, shooters on the Armstrong yeah. team. You know, Campy and Lucas and Volkert have just put on a show tonight. Uh, they're the three leading scorers, and it ain't even close on this team, and They've been carrying them tonight. They, um, they've get some openings. They've been able to stretch their arms out and really rip it. And Iserman's been put to the test. And he's, he's come up good. But, boy, there's a certain point where you're just not going to stop the ball. Yeah, and I, I think of that goal in the third. Uh, once again, one of the long sticks. Trenton Jacobson oh. uncorked one from the right. I mean, that had some smoke on it. That was quite a shot. Here's Miller taking the face off. And once again, all night tonight, it's been Ryan Anderson. Just a soft horn. This guy shows a lot of skill as a face-off, get-off specialist. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, that is a big deal in this game. If you got someone who can win face-offs like that, you're going to have a job. Well, the other thing I like about him, too, is that sometimes he's not get-off. Sometimes he's yeah. got to play defense, and he's done a number of times. He's come from behind to get the ball out of a Champlin Park player stick just with a quick poke chip. Jeez, he's quick, isn't he? Look at that. And he, he can't grab that one. He gets a little help, and finally Armstrong does control. But Anderson won that. They is off. And, well, you know, Luke Gellerman's got to be excited to have him around to take face-offs. Yeah, no kidding. For the next couple of years. And now we've got a quick timeout here early in the fourth. A little bit unusual. I, I don't. I don't think there was a penalty here. No, they they were looking kind of confused and pressed, and sometimes they'll call a uh, timeout just to maintain control of the ball and settle it down and get let them get back in their offense. Remember the ball ended up in a long stick's hands, and he kind of looked like I don't know what to do with this. Thing, yeah. I got to get rid of it, and he finally got it to a short stick. But uh, yeah, so I think that's why he called the timeout just to settle it down a little bit. So we still got a game 8-4. Armstrong, once again, has dominated the attack zone time. But Jamblin Park, when, when they've had opportunities, have been able to beat yep. Colin Johnson four times. So still a long way to go in lacrosse. By the way, Champlin Park, uh, they are off until next Wednesday. They don't have another game when they host Anoka here. And as we pointed out earlier in the evening, uh, one more this week for Robinsdale Armstrong. Uh, they will be at Maple Grove to play the Crimson on Friday night. Who are 4-0 undefeated. And you look at the league standings, Elk River Zimmerman 5-0, Maple Grove overall 5-0, Blaine 4-0, Centennial 5-1, Irondale a pretty good team this year, 4-2 overall. 
So a lot of strength in this league, but no one ranked from the Northwest Suburban in the top ten. Well, North doesn't get a lot of respect. It's pretty much the South and the West. And uh, if you look at the top ten, that's pretty much who's there. But that's okay. We still have got to prove ourselves in the state tournament. We really are. When we sent teams in there from this conference, they have not done well in the state tournament. And until we go in there a couple times and dominate, we're not going to get the respect. Here's Carter Lucas having a little trouble. Gets it back. Lucas strong gets it down low and it goes a little bit too far and then that one goes over the end line and Champlain Park's gonna get it back so good power move by Carter Lucas but didn't pay any dividends and now Champlain Park an opportunity and you'd think Dan they need a goal here well it's getting late in the game oh, and they turn it right back over oh. and they've had too many of those tonight just unforced errors either throwing it to the wrong color jersey or throwing it over the head of their own jerseys. And the Falcons have played really good press defense. Uh, they have given Champlin no room on the field at all. Very rarely has the Champlin player been able to run wild and free. Yeah, it, it, not easy clears. That shot, by the way, by Campion goes wide. Armstrong hangs on and they'll set up. Neil Jurgensen, just a sophomore, spent a lot of time down behind the goal. Armstrong in the attack zone. has done a good job moving it around. Has shown good speed. Lucas comes to the near side. Almost skips away. And before the game, I, I saw Lucas as they were, they were getting ready and warming up. He is, he is a big kid. Don't lose the height, but he's got to be 6'5". There is a shot that goes wide. That one came right out in the middle and a good, good shot by Haugen. Yeah, there's a couple six-footers or better on that Armstrong team. Oh, yeah, team. They're, for sure. They're bigger than the Rebels. Yeah, and they, they've shown it defensively uh, tonight, and, and they've used their size effectively in the attack zone as well. Campion, Lucas, the Rebels get it right back. And let's see if they can clear. And once again, they're, they're getting hounded. Good job by Matt Campion. He is not making it easy for the Rebels to get it out of there. Now a long clear to the center of the field. The Rebels finally break that pressure. Then they put it on the ground. And we got another battle. Heimer in there for the Rebels. Schmidtbauer in there. And here comes Armstrong and Joe Campion. <laughs> Big guy. And that long stick. He's been very effective tonight. And now they try to clear. And the Rebels put on a little pressure. And it comes to the middle of the field. And we got another ball on the ground. And no one really wants it right now. Kind of a hot potato. And now here's Joe Campion carrying it ahead. Campion gets it back. <laughs> then it's right back on the ground. And now order restored as Jacob Warges. He has a goal in the game. That came in quarter number two. Coming at 9.43. Coming up on eight to go on this one. Armstrong content to just working around. Smart play right now. You got a four goal lead. Work some clock. Lucas, long shot goes wide left. And Iserman had it measured. Well, and if, you know, a lot of times you know, he's too far out to take that shot, but we've seen him make that shot yep. a couple times. Besides, they have two people behind the net. The champion's nobody, so chances are if he misses the net, they're going to get the ball back, which is what happened. Especially if you shoot at the goaltender's feet. You pointed it out. You're going to get bad hops on the surface. Mm -hmm. At home at Armstrong, you're going to get much truer hops on yep. the turf yep. and around the league where there are turf fields. But not here. You can take advantage of that when you're shooting at the goaltender. Well, they were told that's how they would shoot. I mean, you and I have seen they've pretty much 90% of the time, every shot's been a bounce shot, high-low. Yeah, Campion uh, put that elbow down or the forearm, and you can't do that, and Champlin Park gets it back. And they're having a hard time getting a clear out of their own zone again. Schmidt Bauer goes across, and now the Rebels finally get on the attack. They go down low and just throw it away. Oh, Jeez. what a shame. Just a little bit too far. They are trying to get it to Moldan, but he was nowhere near. Hey, 
And they can't afford that as the clock winds down here in the fourth. Well, I've also been impressed with the way that Armstrong has, has done their clears tonight. They have been very effective clearing the ball out of their zone. And cruising in, missing wide, Armstrong. They'll maintain. That was once again Carter Lucas. Senior midfielder has been so effective. Now Champlain Park comes out. Lucas beats that. Beats another defender. And that one goes way up high over Israelman in the cage. And I'm calling out the plays here now. They go to the middle of the field and it skips away from Armstrong. Now a chase and a shove from behind coming into the play. Cooper Bagsley. Oh. And Armstrong picks it up. Voorhees is going to trot down below the goal line extended and spin out of there. Get it further out. And right now, under six to go in the game. Armstrong happy to play keep away. Haugen, way out on top. Haugen works to the near sideline, slipping and falling. This is a recording. <laughs> we, we've seen a lot of that, oh. very unusual. The footing has been tough. A lot of sand on the field. Here's Lucas in a shot. Oh, That's nice knocked sand. down by Iserman. I think he got a leg on it. He did. <laughs> nice save. That's big. Boy, Lucas decides to go look out, but Boy, it used the basket in his feet. He's, he backed up the basket with his foot and it's made a nice save there. There's Moldan the other way. Moldan finally scoops up the ground ball. We got another stoppage. Come and we got a timeout Champlin Park with 5-10 to go and down by four. And they have, haven't been able to get anything going offensively here in the fourth. Well, thus you have the timeout now. Yep. They finally got possession. Settle them down, they got it in the zone. Okay, now we can start, you know, the free ball, you know, just inside the line. And uh, set up your offense and give them a clue as to what they're doing, you know. You want, the first thing you want to do is avoid the long sticks. I mean, the, the Falcon long sticks have been fabulous. Don't make any move until you get a short stick on you, okay? Or if you've got a long stick on you, look to make a pass to an open guy with a short stick on him, first of all. And then try and get in as close as you can to rip some shots now. Johnson in the net for the Falcons has been vulnerable to the outside shots too. So pretty much anything on net, they've got a chance at scoring. So I tell them, hit the net. Don't try and get fans with it. Hit the net somehow. And they have had a couple of big defenders, Trenton Jacobson and Joe Campion, who've made it really tough for the Rebels. And, I, and, and the way they continue to pressure, Luke Gellerman's got to be thrilled with how physical the Falcons have been tonight. Yeah. He, he mentioned it to you before the game, mentioned it to me. Hey, you know, we, we want to be physical, and, and they've used those big guys very effectively tonight. They've got the size. They're athletes. They know how to do it. The other thing I like, Steve, you notice is very good with their sticks. They know how to play defense with their sticks without getting penalties. Okay, here we go. Let's see what uh, Ben Blazer, the Champlin Park head coach, drew up here to get a look. It's still 8-4. Closing in on five to go in the game. Rebels need a goal soon. If they want to have hope as this one winds down. Wind blowing in out of the north. Oh. Miller losing the handle, got bumped behind the net. Once again, Armstrong not afraid to challenge. They're up by four, and they, they can. Boy, that turf, aggressive. though. That turf, just, man, feet came right off from under. And he just cannot play it. Roy Johnson here. Now he gives it up on the left. Oh. Here's Schmidtbauer. Schmidtbauer carries down below the end line. Now Miller. Miller gets in front, tries a tough angle shot. That's going to go wide. I like that. I wish he would have gone low on it. Yeah, he just kind of charged in on a tough angle. Well, we get that stick on the inside, and Johnson grabs it here real quick control. He yes. has been marvelous with his clear passes. Ben Kennedy here for Armstrong. Outlet pass ahead. Well, oh, that's a nice feed ahead. Armstrong on the move. 
was a good pass to Reinhardt. And now this is Matt Campion. Campion tries a shot, misses wide, but Armstrong's going to hang on. Campion thought, why not make it 9-4? Yeah, Matt, settle down. You got the lead. You don't have to score anymore. Just control the ball and work for a good shot. You know, that's the other thing that they've done well, the maintaining of control inside the offenses. They just haven't dropped the ball. They haven't made bad passes. You know, there's been fewer far between. I mean, they haven't been perfect, but they've been way better than Champa Park has. Good defense of there. Carter Lucas loses a stick. Got bumped effectively there by Connor Hammer Capitan. That's a good defensive play, standing up the bigger guy yep. and causing him to lose the stick and the ball. Now it comes to the middle of the field. Rebels can't control. Kick back into the Rebels' defensive zone. Oh, and then it goes out of play off the Rebels. Once again, another error. Well, the other thing, too, I'm, I'm just really impressed with the Falcons' aggressiveness, too. They're causing some of this stuff. I mean, you see some of these players, when they see a red jersey coming at them, expect to be attacked. And I mean physically. And when you know Joe Campion and the likes of Trenton Jacobson are back there. You're going to get a little bit of nasty. And we got a ball down, and we got a player. That was Matt Campion. And Shane McIntosh for the Rebels didn't like it. As a matter of fact, I, I think he's going to win the argument. The oh Rebels are going to get it here. That surprised me. Okay. <laughs> and then getting decked right at the center of the field is Caden Walters. He just got smoked here. Look at that. Woo! Big hit up high by Carter Lucas. And I would assume Lucas is going to come and take a knee for yeah, that. I think he's going to, yep. Well, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, Lucas has been playing like that all night. You know, that, that wasn't a dirty shot. I mean, you know, a lot of times, like I said, it's the degree of how hard you hit, but there was nothing dirty in the hit at all. Armstrong goes a man down for the third time tonight. Let's see if the Rebels can take advantage. Uh, time is not their friend right now. They, they need to score quickly. When they get an opening, they got to start firing the ball. And here we go. Roy Johnson on top works to his right. He'll get it back. Go to the left. Moldan. They get it further down low. Heimer taking a shot. Moldan. Here's Heimer. Gets a look. Skips it to the left. Had a good look, but he skipped it wide left. He did. Johnson was covering well on the short side there, too. He had the play covered, and that basket was active. There you go. Schmidt-Bauer charges in. No one picked him up, and he beats the goaltender, and the Rebels are on the board. And it is our first goal of quarter number four, and it goes to Joe Schmidt-Bauer. He didn't look like he was going at the net. They just figured they let Johnson handle it himself, and I think he was surprised that they were letting him handle it himself. And why not? 9.08 time of the goal, and the Rebels have cut it to 8.5. And now an all-important draw coming up. Cooper Baxley's out there, and he's going to try his luck against Ryan Anderson. They've thrown a number of people mm -hmm. at Anderson, and Anderson's just so quick. And th this is a unique skill, being effective at this. Yes, it is. There's a variety of techniques to be used. There's a lot of planning that goes in. If you don't, this isn't random. Each of those gentlemen has a plan in mind of what they want to do in that whistle blows. And here's Anderson. Won it, tried to pick it up, but then ultimately the Rebels control. Here comes Miller. Big spot for the Rebels. Still some time. They got to move quickly. Here's Drew Heimer, the junior, off to his left. The freshman, Roy Johnson. Johnson gets it into the middle effectively. Shot blocked down. That was a tough shot in traffic. I got a loose ball, fought for. Big spot here. Can the Rebels control Roy Johnson? No. And now Good Heimer move. does. Heimer gets it. And now do we have another timeout here? What do we got going on? The official wants to see Heimer's helmet. Yeah, they want to, yeah, came off. yeah, they want to secure that. So they stop play for the moment. Rebels will hang on. Here's Heimer. Near his side. Tries to use his speed to get into the middle. Trying to find a teammate. Goes off to his right. Roy Johnson. Oh! Saves it. Picks it up on the run. Long stick in his face. 
And they work it off to the right. Under two to go. Champlin Park trying to get into the middle and get a look. They go across. Johnson, scoop shot, saved by oh, Johnson. Oh, that was a beauty. Roy Johnson takes the shot. Colin Johnson for Armstrong makes the save. There we go. Stolen by, by the Rebels. Rebels charge in, shot. Another save by Colin Johnson. Oh, quick shot there by Ehrlichman. Why not? They're running out of time. I like it. Here comes Champlin Park. Can't control the ground ball. Armstrong trying to pick it up. Sticks flying everywhere. Bodies all over the place. Ball still on the ground. And now we got a shove. And we got a timeout. Luke Gellerman and Armstrong. There you go, Johnson. Oh, beauty. That was a that was a rifled high, low high shot. Look at this. Going up for that upper corner, but nice. Johnson's just zeroed in on that man like a laser beam. Nice save. That was definitely going in. So Roy Johnson for the Rebels, Colin Johnson for the Falcons, and he makes a big save there to keep it eight to five with 116 left. Now the Rebels really up against it now, but they have picked it up and uh, made Armstrong work for it here late. Yeah. Well, they've created some opportunities, too, by getting turnovers, winning faceoffs, doing what they needed to do to kind of turn the tide here. They've kept it close. But, uh, again, it's right now, if they lose this game, it's it's a tale of losing as many faceoffs and just the unforced turnovers. They just killed them. And a great job. Just excellent pictures again tonight by our CCX crew. Tremendous job. Everyone. Thanks, guys. Yeah, just great pictures again, as always. And uh, the goaltenders have, have really made some nice saves tonight. Yeah. Iserman for the Rebels, Johnson for the Falcons, and that's been a fun part of the game as well. And it takes courage to stand in there. There's no doubt about it. It is no joke. Yeah, there's no pads under the shorts, folks, and they're not wearing shin guards either. It's, it's when that hits shin, it hits shin. Yeah, it is, uh, it is the real deal. Courage. <laughs> Courage for the goaltenders. Here's Carter Lucas. Big guy right down the middle. And he scores. Oh. Uh, oh. Spin to the middle. Right down the lane. In on Iserman. He couldn't do anything. Iserman is just, oh, my gosh. How did he get in here? What a great move. Watch this. You know, cut to his left. And watch him find the opening coming right down the middle. He'll just create it and get inside here. Switch his hands. I love it. Got his left hand into the movement, then brought it back to the right and put it over the right shoulder, or left shoulder of uh, Israel. Time of the goal, 10.55. Carter Lucas, his third of the night. And Armstrong yep. putting this one away. Yeah, that was a nail in the coffin right there. Yeah. They win the draw once again. Anderson there on the move again. In on Iserman. Oh, oh, oh. nice play. <laughs> Tic tac toe. Volkert's going to replay that one in his mind a few times tonight. Volkert, three goals in the game, looking for number four in the team lead. Couldn't get it. But a nice play as they move it inside beautifully. Armstrong trying to get to double digits. They beat Totino Grace 11 to 6. They beat Spring Lake Park 18 to 6. And trying to move to 3 and 3 on the year. The Rebels would fall to 1 and 6, but this team continues to improve. I think, I think the Rebels are going to have some more wins between now and the end of the regular season. I think they are. They're working into the better part of their schedule now, too. They're not going to have to play Blaine anymore, Maple Grove, or Elk River. You know, they got a better part. I think four of the next five games against teams with losing records, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, four of the next five games against teams with losing Oka, records. They got Anoka at Coon Rapids, Andover, at Osseo Park Center. Tough one at Elk River Zimmer, and then they close it out with Duluth. So there are opportunities yeah. for the Rebels to add to their victory total. Armstrong has it here as we wind this one down. Got a loose ball. Armstrong is going to control behind the net. And this is Neil Jurgensen. Skin a sophomore. He's done a nice job. Falcon turned into a rabbit. Come get me. 
Nice game. Falcons, nice game. It was a good win for them. Really showed their stuff. Did what Coach Gettleman set out to do. Got physical, got their gunners the, the ball, and they, they came through and scored. Uh, nice game for them. Champlin fought back. I like them. And they showed they got some potential. They got some gunners on this team. The kids could shoot it. Johnson especially has got a, good, got a cannon um, with that goaltending. Uh, they'll be all right. We'll see what it looks like at the end of the season now they get into the rest of the season. Armstrong moves to 3-3 three and three with the victory. Champlin Park falls to 1-6 and six tonight. The final 9-5 to five as Robbinsdale Armstrong beats Champlin Park here tonight. They led it 3-2 after 1, 6-3 at the half, 8-4 after 3. And uh, of note, uh, once again, Carter Lucas had the hat trick as well and uh, the hat trick as well to Spencer Volkert. But I was really impressed by uh, the brothers Matthew Campion up front on the attack and Joe Campion on the backside with the long stick. Very impressive as well. They, they got some big kids, and you can see one of them there in Carter Lucas. He's a big guy. Jeez, yeah, six, well over six feet tall, and you can see he was battering people the night on his way to the net. Yeah, and uh, for the Rebels tonight, uh, goals for Baxley, a uh, couple for Johnson, one for Miller, and one for Schmidtbauer. Good play by the goaltenders. Colin Johnson for Armstrong and Cody Iserman for Champlin Park. Great job by our crew on a chilly night here at Champlin Park High School. Big thanks to uh, my play-by-play -play partner, Dan Ficken. I'm Steve Thompson reminding you of the final score. Armstrong defeats Champlin Park 9-5. Good night.